There's a sail on the flat. Sail on the flat. That's a pair of slammers, boys. Nice fish. Reeling in the Keys with host Captain George Clark Jr. Well, welcome back to Reeling in the Keys. I'm Captain George Clark Jr. And we're at Charter Boat Row right here in Key West, all the way down the chain of keys, getting ready to go out with Booyah Charters. Captain Lee Kerbell gonna take us out there, maybe do some live bait fishing today. There's lots of things going on, so come along. Hey, Captain Lee. Good morning, Kath. How you doing today? Captain George. Nice permission to, to come aboard, sir. Absolutely. Let's go fishing. So what do you got planned for us today, Lee? Well, I think we're going to do a combination of things today. I'm going to start off the day catching some live bait, hopefully okay. some herring and blue runners. Um, I'm thinking we run out to one of the wrecks that we have out here. We actually have a good number of them. Um, see what's down there. We've been getting some nice amberjacks, almaco jacks, mutton Perfect. snappers, cobias. Love that. Love um, the combination. Love, love the not know, knowing what you're going to get every time you drop a bait down. So. That's the beauty of fishing on the wrecks. Um, you get to use the jigs and live bait. You never know what you're going to get. Even I like jig time. fishing. That's kind of fun too. That's for a the lot folks of fun. that maybe haven't seen that before because you're you're actually working something, and then when you get the bite, it's pretty impressive. Absolutely. Um, so we're going to see where that takes us, and then we're probably going to do a little kite fishing um, on the drift. We're going to get up uh, outside of the edge there. See and and kite fishing could be a number of fish as well. Sailfish, mahi, tuna, I mean everything, Absolutely. Right? And while we're kite fishing, um, we have a variety of lines on the other side, um, ranging from the surface all the way to the bottom. Oh, wow. Um, so we could get into cobias. We can still catch mutton snappers while we're kite fishing. Sure. Tuna, mahi, uh, anything is possible. That sounds great, man. Well, I'm ready to go. Let's, Let's go get them. So uh, this is one of our local spots here. We have several of them. We usually hit up a few bait spots in the morning, try to catch some fresh uh, redfin herring, blue runners. Sometimes we get cigar minnows. Try to load up the well here. So a mixed bag. Try to get a mixed bag. Different fish like a variety of baits sometimes. I had two on. Did you? Pulled the hook on one. <laughs> yep. Well, at least we know there was two here. Lee, I heard you say you were originally from Venezuela. You were born there, huh? Absolutely. Um, I was... heard you speak in Spanish earlier. I was like, whoa, <laughs> look at this guy go. It's kind of cool. You know, you don't disclose the fact that you speak a different language. And being in South Florida like we are, you have a lot of opportunities to hear people talk smack about you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so then, you know, you, you get the whole scoop and then you come back and say, hey, you know, what, what's, what's the problem here? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> there you go. Coming back. My man. They say Key Largo guys can't fish. Are those good for bait? Those are awesome. Here? Are they? Yeah. Muttons and stuff? Yep. Or, yeah. Some days they just want to eat a pinfish. Mm -hmm. I don't. And then some days they don't want them. Yeah. Yep. I don't know exactly how that works, but. <laughs> Uh, sometimes you want I know how it works with me, you know? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I want a burrito. Sometimes you want a pizza. That's right. That's right. Lee, these are threadfin herring. Are these the herring that you can eat? I mean, well, pickled, pickled herring? When I was in Holland, um, this is exactly what they were eating. Yeah? And I, I tried some, and uh, they're actually pretty good. Whoa. So I always figured if, uh, if sport fishing fails, I could open a cannery. Right. <laughs> Why not? Whoa. Uh-oh. Stringer. Uh-oh. Got two spreads now. <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> See, that's, that's, a, that's a that's, Latino flavor. That's it. That's it. You <laughs> must have rubbed some secret sauce on your sabiki there. Definitely. Ado adobo. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was fishing in Bermuda on a big private boat. We just delivered it over from North Carolina. Um, just me and the crew get over there, get set up. Everything's fantastic. The owner and his family fly in. 
We go out, we have a, a fun day, you know, just a, just a, a fishing day. Got a nice 300 pound blue marlin, maybe a couple tunas or whatnot. You know, it's fantastic. On the way in, everything's good. Owner's happy, the guests are happy, everything's good. And uh, come the next day, we start getting some complaints from the owner's office. The secretary starts calling us and complaining about this, that, and the other. Um, things that I, I found to be, you know, somewhat petty. And, you know, out of, out of no maliciousness or, or any ill feeling, I just didn't think it was a, a right fit for me to be, you know, fishing with that crew in Bermuda at that time. We got a plane ticket for the following morning as the, the boat was going to go fishing. So I get on the airplane, you know, leave graciously, you know, get to the airport, fly out. And I'm at Flanagan's in Lauderdale having, uh, having lunch. And I start getting all these texts and phone calls from Bermuda. How big is it? How big is it? Oh, my God, how big is it? You're still fighting it. And I have a lot of friends in Bermuda. It's almost like a second home to me. So I just thought it was my buddies pulling my leg. Lo and behold, the boat that I left that morning went fishing that afternoon and caught a 1,289 pound blue marlin. Like, like, like the fifth biggest in, in the Atlantic ever right. caught. Right. So, so I couldn't breathe for like three hours. I was just like, ah, ah, ah. All right, so we're just rigging up here for, uh, for jigging. We're using a seven ounce vertical jig. Um, and this jig is fantastic. I like this color, especially on a bit of an overcast day. Not that it's super overcast, but it's cloudy. Um, this glows in the dark, and it's, it's a good ways down there. So we're looking at, like I said, 200 to 300 feet of water. So I feel this jig really does the, the, the job it, it needs to do down there. I, I, it must look like a squid or something. I'm not sure what it looks like, but the fish sure do like it. But we're loaded up on bait. Yeah, it didn't take long. That was good. A couple drifts, and we got what we needed, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, we're ready to go. Let's go hit it. So now we're going to go to the wreck. Exactly. We're going to go try a couple wrecks, try that out and do some vertical jigging, and then maybe a little eye baiting after that. Sounds good. Let's do it. You got it. Believe it. So uh, we're setting up outside of this wreck area here. Um, and a real important thing to do when you're wreck fishing is to see how you are drifting. So you, you don't waste time away from the productive areas. So what I like to do when I get out here is I just come out, get outside of it, get upwind of wherever I'm trying to fish and just see where I'm going. Right. I just keep my chart plotter on as always. Uh, and I see the direction that the boat's moving in. Right. Um, and then I base my drift on, on that direction. We're about 200 feet of water here. So we let it go all the way down. As I'm sure you know, since we're drifting, sometimes it's hard to feel the bottom. We're you know, still moving. So what I do is just I kind of pull up on help, it like that. Help it off, yeah. yeah. Some guys get all weird and go like that and stuff. But I think that's, that's a little, little much. All right, so I've reached the bottom here. What I do is I just close the bale manually. And then I come up and I wind down as I jig up. Gotcha. That kind of motion right there. I don't go too crazy. I mean, you can't, you can speed it up or slow it down. And I try to get about, I don't know, what I figure to be 100 feet off the bottom. Then open it back up and drop it back down. Getting a bite, getting a bite. Very nice. Ooh. Oh. Oh, I think he got off. Oh, he spit it. Ah. Ah. All right, that was one drift. We're going to go back around and do it again, see if we can stay connected this time. Oh, there he is. He ate the jig. He ate the jig. Get him, Lee. Yes, sir. Woo. Pull and drag. Blackfin, maybe? Yeah, I'm hoping it's a blackfin. I feel him shaking his head. Okay. And he's turning quick on me, so that's kind of what I'm thinking it is. I'm not used to all this. Little head shakes going on. Kind of excited to see what it is. Well, what's happening with it, Lee? I, I think he's getting eaten, man. Come on, come on. Oh, man. He's seen better days. Yeah, I see all sorts of critters moving around down there. What do you think got them? Kudas? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, probably barracudas, but looking from the size of these bites, it uh, must have been some monsters or one monster. Poor guy. Poor guy. <laughs> We're going to go switch it up a, a little bit here. We're going to try popping the kites for a little while. Uh, Dang it, man. We had a couple good ones on it. They got, they got through the leader there, and then they ate the other. 
poor guy. Right. Um, yeah, a little bit of action there. But uh, just to switch the day up a little bit, I think we're going to pop the kites and hopefully see a sailfish or maybe a nice mahi or kobe or something. Cool, cool Let's man. Let's give it a shot. Let's do it. I'm in. The purpose of the kite is to keep your live baits right on the surface of the water. Um, and what that does is keeps your leader and main line out of the fish's visibility. So when you're dealing with spookier species like blackfin tunas, um, larger mahi-mahis, sailfish, of course, um, the kite is a great presentation uh, for these baits. There we go, I think. Little trick that we do, um, instead of using a snap swivel on like a 15 or 18 foot leader, we use this rubber band here and just slide it all the way up, close to the bimini, say, I don't know, 12, 15 feet. And if you have a nice fish on, a nice meat fish that you want to gaff, you're not um, burdened with the task of trying to hand line this thinner 50 pound fluorocarbon. You know, if a nice fish goes to bolt or whatever, you don't have to hold it in your hand. You have your angler just wind and this slides right down. So it just makes it that much well, easier. Well, it's but... easier for a guy that's fishing by himself. Sure. You know, that, that's perfect. I like that. Hadn't seen that one before. And my usual setup when I do this is uh, two kite lines off our starboard side here. And then on the other side, I'm going to have uh, a flat line right off the surface, one down maybe 50, 60 feet in mid-level, and then I'll have one on the bottom for a mutton snapper, cobia, or whatever else might be around. In the water. Here we go. Beautiful condition. Whee! You watch that cork start bouncing around, and you know right away it's the fish getting nervous, like something swam by them or is underneath them. Oh, fish on! You got a head shaker. There you go. I like that, Cap. You yeah. want a hooky? Yeah. All right, let me. Here, plug up. me in, sir. You got it, brother. Right on. <laughs> Don't leave home without it. Looks like he's coming up top. He's shaking his head quite a bit. I don't know, but boy, what a good run, huh? That was a pretty good scream right there. Oh, oh baby. Oh. All right, so this is the three way swivel rig. Okay. Um, so what's going to happen when we get up close is I'm going to hand you the lead. Sure. And uh, I'm going to fingertip this fish close to the boat. And if he goes to bolt, just be ready to let go and maybe slack off on the drag a what little bit. What he means by fingertipping is he's going to leader the fish up with his fingertips only because you don't want to grab it with your hand so you don't hurt yourself or break them off. Exactly. And then if the fish decides to go away, which this one may because it's a, it's a pretty good fish, then he can always let that leader go and We'll get them back on the rod here and fight them again. Come here, baby. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a full grown one. Oh, yeah. Black fin tuna. It works. Oh, oh he's jumping. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice, nice one. job. That was sweet. Look at that. Nice fish there. Beautiful. Man, what a solid fish, too. This is all muscle, you know. Look at the oh. colors on that fish. They got that little blue line right here with the gold. Gorgeous. And you look down there and you see you see a little dark, then you see that gold and you you know right away. You know what it is. Yeah, what a nice fish, too. Beautiful. I mean, good, good size. Nice cool. job, Cap. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> All right, let's see what else is out there. Oh, baby. All right, I'm going to wind everything oh, up. Oh, jumping. Jumping. Pretty work. <laughs> Sailfish on. Got a sail dog. Yeah, baby. See, so you're making it happen, Captain Lee. You got it. Making it happen. Rather be lucky than good, brother. <laughs> I'm going to clear everything but the kite, and I'm going to start working my way towards him. How's that? Can we catch a bigger sail? <laughs> <laughs>
Never uh, heard that before. Going going offshore. Oh, short baits out of the water. Dropping. See if we get a double here. I'm telling you, I want to see you doubled up with me. <laughs> I don't know, Cap. That looks like a lot of work to me. It's a lot. Oh, I love the sailfish. Taking line. Right. Whoa, there he is. There he is. Jumping. Jumping. <laughs> oh, he's jumping like crazy. That never gets old, Lee. Never, ever, ever. Right under the cork. There's my catch. I got the leader through the rod tip. Look at how big that guy is. A beautiful fish. Well, nice that job. didn't take long. No. About 15 minutes into putting kite baits out, and looky what happened. We get a nice tuna, nice sailfish. Man, I can dig it. You want me to uh, leader the fish? Oh. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> You'll poke your eye out, kid. Yeah, that's right. Come on, buddy. We're going to let you go. I just want to get that hook out. Oh. There you go. Sometimes better to let them do their own thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's fine, too. Beautiful. Nice job, man. Awesome. Oh, sweet. All right. <laughs> well, that feels good. Well, here's this. Gotcha. And I will be going to take a nap right now. <laughs> Can I take a nap too? <laughs> tiring work. <laughs> nice job. Right there. Yeah, baby. Well, we're just getting ready to wrap things up for a wonderful day down here in Key West, fishing the South Atlantic Ocean right here. And Lee hooks a nice one. That's got to be a mutton, huh? I'm hoping. Boy, it wouldn't that like just make, that'd be so great. Oh, man, would it ever. You know? <laughs> oh. Oh, baby, double header. Woo! Yeah! Woo Another sail! Sailfish! <laughs> right there! Right there, right baby! There, buddy. Yeah! Woo! I'll tell you what. Gonna jump! Yeah, boy! Look at this thing. Nice red grouper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll love it, Lee. I like it when the plan comes together, Captain. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let this guy go and we'll get on your sailfish. Awesome, man. Gonna jump, there he goes. <laughs> What'd I say earlier? Never gets old. You call My that. My Babe Ruth over here. <laughs> All right. Straight up C. Yes, sir. Another nice one, too. Yeah. Another good size. Really Real good, good sail there. Fish. I said, what am I supposed to say? Booyah! <laughs> Right there on top. Slowing up. Coming at us. Gotcha. Out of gear. Going away. Okay. Oh! Hot <laughs> tip. All right. You're good right nice there. Job. Oh, yeah. Let me pull up on him just a little more here. Hey, he's turning around. All right. Out of gear. He's gonna jump. Come on, jump. Backing up. Oh, baby. Look at that fish. <laughs> nice sail. Beautiful sailfish. That, don't we? Oh, yeah. Got a fin up. Take that all day long. All right. I'm going to go ahead and grab the release here. Oh, he's not ready yet. All right, I'm gonna put this down. Nice fish there. Oh yeah, a couple a real one. nice fish today. Yeah, baby. 
Now these fish throw their stomach up and they can swallow it back, which is kind of cool, huh? Absolutely. They can regurgitate things and... Oh! Oh! Watch it, watch it. <laughs> Full contact. Full contact. Look at the color on this fish, beautiful. Oh yeah. All, All right, right, get out of here, buddy. Purple. Look at that thing. Get there out you here. go, swallow that. Swallow your thing back. There he goes. There's a place out on the ocean, ain't on a map anywhere. The captain's looking at the water, he knows exactly where to steer. No internet or Wi-Fi tower All that stress is gone The lines just went in the water And somebody yells, fish on And it's just another day Reeling in the keys We got that fishing feeling There's no place we'd rather be We're a million miles from nowhere Ain't lost at sea. Just living life, living the dream, reeling in the key. 